It's time for an update on La Nina. What is she doing? I'm Matt Makins. Thanks for joining me. Again, like and subscribe. It's great feedback for me. Just hit the buttons down there below or the bell up there, and you'll get notified when I post new videos such as this one. Thank you very much. Appreciate your support. Let's check in with the status of La Nina as we went through the first couple of weeks October. Where are we? Where are we historically? She remains quite strong. Again, La Nina is part of the ocean region known as ENSO. These black boxes here in the equatorial Pacific, that's the ENSO region. And if the ocean there is colder than average, that's a La Nina. If it's warmer than average, that's when we have El Nino patterns. Right now, blue colorations in those boxes, that's colder than average. Northern Pacific is quite warm. We'll come back to that in a minute as that will tie into our winter forecast here across North America. Let's just zoom in on those boxes, though. Just the Enso region there in the equatorial Pacific, still colder than average ocean conditions. Now, how have these ocean conditions changed recently? They haven't. Out of those four areas, plotted the temperatures in those areas back one year, and we see they have remained cold. There's some spikes here and there where there's been some periods of warming, but we're still in a La Nina phase. And most recently, we've seen a significant drop in these regions. So not only is La Nina remaining, in some cases over the last couple of months, La Nina has gotten stronger after already being quite a strong phenomenon. So La Nina is in place in the oceans. That doesn't imply the atmosphere has to respond, but in this case, the atmosphere is responding to this La Nina. If you look at how La Nina plays into the atmosphere, there's multiple ways of doing it, but just looking at the surface sea level pressure, if you will, the barometric pressure around the region, and if you'd sort where that is historically, here we have 2022 for September into October is fourth strongest atmosphere in a La Nina phase that we've recorded since 1950. So we have cold ocean. The atmosphere is locked in this La Nina phase. It'll be with us for some time. What does this mean as we close out the year? Close out 2022. Here's your precipitation pattern. We will have some wetter than normal areas in the central and northern Rockies. Precipitation will favor kind of the Pacific Northwest and the northern Rockies, as well as the Great Lakes into New England. It likely keeps us drier than average across the south, despite kind of a wet October that New Mexico has had. Now, those outlooks are pretty classic for uh, fall and early winter when you have a La Nina pattern. What about the snowfall? I posted my winter outlook quite a while back. You can find that video here on my channel, but let's update that. How is that forecast panning out so far? If we look through early October, the snowpack, it's throughout Alaska and goes on down to the south on average. And that average, uh, based on the data that I pulled, goes back to 2006. Good representation of where snow is. So we'd have a snowfall from Alaska down through the Canadian Rockies, and then we have the central Rockies around Wyoming and Colorado. would have some snowpack through the early half of October. Where are we this year? Well, we don't have that. We don't have that snowpack anywhere in the U.S., really per se, a little bit throughout the Canadian Rockies, and we certainly are building the snowpack in Alaska. So it's it's not terribly late, but it is a later onset of some of the snowpack in the high country. That is part of having La Nina. That is also part of having a very warm Pacific Ocean just offshore. That means that high pressure or a ridge or a storm blocker is sitting over the western U.S. So it's not out of the question to see kind of the snowless areas that we've had across the west. Record-breaking heat, very warm temperatures, and lack of storm systems for the west. So it's not surprising to see what would normally be here versus what we have this year in terms of snowfall. Off to, a again, not, not tremendously late, but a bit of a late start. So how does the latest La Nina update, La Nina conditions, Pacific conditions, how does this change my winter outlook? Here is the same snowfall forecast that I showed you about a month ago in that previous forecast. So we're still looking at a dome of, of relative heat and, and lack of storm flow for much of the West. So for snowpack in the Rockies, that's still looking drier than average. Snowfall will favor areas of the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Rockies, just as I showed you in those outlook maps as we wrap up 2022. We may also see some moisture around the Great Lakes and New England states, kind of hit and miss. But kind of the driest area of all, if you look at a snowfall forecast based on where we are now and the analog forecast methodology I explained in the last video, we still see the biggest dry area, if you will, for snowfall remains of the West. 
uh, California, into Nevada, Utah, and Colorado, and may move into Idaho. So what La Nina has done here recently has not changed my opinion on the winter forecast. What I previously aired does continue. Now, what may change as we get into next spring, say? starts to bring in some warmer conditions throughout that Enso region, kind of starting off here and then expanding. Now this will be taking some time to do so. It's not gonna be a rapid change, it does not appear. But once we hit 2023, we'll begin to see this Enso region beginning to warm up. That does not mean the atmosphere will immediately respond. It may take a long time. It may take months for the atmosphere to say, okay, we're not in La Nina anymore, I'll begin to transition. So for the winter forecast, even if the ocean conditions begin to change, I'm still holding with La Nina or La Nina weather pattern as we go throughout the winter ahead. Other areas to watch out for, the Pacific Ocean. Here recently we've seen a little colder area north of Hawaii. That's mostly due to upwelling. There's been some storm systems there. Zooming in, there's that cooler area. What we're going to watch through the rest of October into November is right in here. Gulf of Alaska and the coast of North America here with the ocean temperatures. Right around late October into November, these areas classically may begin to cool off. And once they do so, say by the end of November into December, they're kind of locked in, locked into their winter temperature orientation. And then that will dictate where we may have uh, ridges of high pressure, or developing storm systems, all of which will impact the winter outlook, that snow forecast for Western North America, and also where the cold goes for the Central Plains or Eastern North America. So a lot's gonna come in over the next, say, give or take four to six weeks or so, and watching these ocean areas. So bottom line here is I don't anticipate the La Nina region, Enso region, to change enough to impact my winter outlook. It continues. What may change that winter outlook is yet to be determined over the next four to six weeks, and that would be a change in the central and northern Pacific and the far eastern Pacific Ocean. Those are the things to be watching. I'll do so, and I'll bring you an update as that data comes in. Thanks for joining my channel. Thanks for following along with me. I really love weather if you haven't caught on, and hopefully you do too. Hopefully I'm sparking an interest as we just kind of ramble through some of the weather phenomenon that we have. Thanks for liking my channel and subscribing too. I'm Matt Makins. We'll see you the next time.